perhaps we'll just begin then by uh, just closing our eyes and just uh, enjoying that the week has come to an end and uh, we have uh okay Richard and on the chat uh -huh. there we go everybody's saying hello so we just um yeah just uh, quietening ourselves a little bit and just bringing ourselves into this space away from um away from all the activities of the day yeah if you want to say good morning and good afternoon you're welcome to but just just coming into yourself coming into a, a mind that is ready to to listen and hear the dhamma so just allowing yourself to let go of all the busyness of the week and allowing yourself to sigh and enjoy relax everything is outside the door and this is a time for yourself to hear yourself to hear the Dhamma and to tune in. Tune your hearts, tune your minds. To what is going on inside and around you. <clears throat> Allowing yourself to relax. <clears throat> Allowing yourself to be silent. Allowing yourself to hear yourself. What is going on? What is going on for you right now? Okay, so just being quiet in our minds and slowly just open our eyes or whatever it is and uh, become aware of where we are and be ready to uh, listen to a sutta. Okay, so today we are on page um, 116 at the end of the page. Um, 
And this is a sutta from the Anguttara Nikaya, uh, number this from the Anguttara Nikaya, the sixes. And um, it's titled The Six Principles of Cordiality. Cordiality is a funny word, but cordiality means, I guess, six principles of, of being able to, to live, live together. Because that's what we do as human beings. We have to live with one another. So you think a lot of the Dhamma is about high, high, uh, high polluting things, but uh, it begins with being able to live in harmony. It begins being able to have um, good thoughts towards yourself and one another. And if this isn't there, if this foundation isn't there, it becomes very hard to to when you sit down to meditate and a lot of other stuff comes up. So being able to live in harmony is the basis of our spiritual practice. Okay, so here we go. Monks, there are these six principles of cordiality that create affection and respect and conduce to cohesiveness, non-dispute, concord and unity. What six? So six principles of cordiality that create affection and respect and conduce to cohesiveness, non-dispute, concord and unity. So here, a monk maintains, huh? yeah, monk or a nun, maintains bodily acts of loving kindness towards his fellow monks, both openly <clears throat> and privately. This is a principle of cordiality that creates affection and respect and conduces to cohesiveness, non-dispute, concord and unity. So, here a monk maintains bodily acts of loving kindness towards his fellow so monk or nun, towards his fellow monastics, both openly and privately. Mm, this is the principle of cordiality. So this is possibly the easiest one for us because we don't tend to, you know, physically go around beating people up or stealing things for the most part we are thank goodness you know the ones sitting here, the ones among us here are physically we have we have that restraint but you know there are people who aren't and sometimes it could be slamming a door or you know just uh yeah things like that 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 you do do when you're a little upset but mostly it refers to beating people up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so openly and privately. Yeah, privately, that's a bit hard to beat somebody privately. Hmm. Anyway, so but anyway, huh? oh, you can beat yourself up whenever Chandra points out. It's true, you can cut yourself a lot. Yeah, that's true. So again, so the second one, a monk maintains verbal acts of loving kindness towards his fellow monks, both openly and privately. This too is a principle of cordiality that creates affection and respect um, and conduces to cohesiveness, non-dispute, concord and unity. So we have spoken many times about this uh, um, verbal acts and that is what most of us get caught on verbal acts because uh, we have to um, use words very often and um, uh, that for most people is is where we make um, uh, unwholesome actions and un so unwholesome karma so um, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps someone in the audience because we, i'm sure we have talked about this many times can can uh, uh remember or um um or yeah 
share what the Buddha has said about verbal verbal acts because he has said a lot there is a whole whole one of the noble eightfold path a whole eighth dedicated to speech so it's a big part of the part of the dhamma we, we kind of spend so much time talking about mindfulness and meditation but a whole eighth is dedicated to right speech samma vacha so uh, uh would anyone like to uh, re write down in the chat or say what they remember of what the Buddha says about right speech because I'm sure we all know of someone here everyone say be quiet what is right speech yes yes it's not, it's not harmful to anyone mm. including yourself. Isn't it? Not harmful is an aspect. I, yeah. I don't remember the specifics. Right, 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 right. There's uh, yeah, Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's for a start, there's not gossiping, there's no not slanderous speech, and uh, not lying. Those are sort of the be so and harsh speech right so slanderous speech is like gossiping actually yeah harsh speech and um, um also um, idle chatter idle chatter we actually uh we are idle chatter where we just kind of like blah 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 <laughs> good at that you do that to fill in fill in gaps you know <laughs> The good thing about living in a monastery that you don't have to fill in gaps. People are happy that you're quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, yes, I can hear. I can see here. It's uh, spoken with. Yeah, here we go. So uh, Mukund remembers the five aspects of right speech. This is also something that the Buddha has in the Anguttara Nikaya. Five aspects that it is spoken with kindness. It is spoken for the benefit of others. It is truthful and it is at the right time. Is that all five? One, two, gentle. three. Oh, and gentle. There you go. And gentle. Yeah. It's that uh, speech isn't actually, you know, sometimes we think that we ha have to make a point, what the Buddha says. If you can do it nicely, yeah, but most of the time, better to be gentle. Okay, and then there's refraining from lying, harsh speech, divisive speech, and gossip. So that is another list that the Buddha reminds us of. And another list is that it's, um, it is, yeah, the same list, beneficial, timely, and spoken with uh, a mind of loving kindness. So no swearing, says Richard. <laughs> and that it's timely in, and it's concise. So there's a lot that can be said about right speech, but we will we'll move on from that because I think we've talked about that on many occasions and we'll go on to the next one. But uh, just to remember that it is one eighth of the Noble Eightfold Path, so not to be underestimated. Okay, so the third one is again, a monk maintains mental acts of loving kindness towards his fellow monks, both openly and privately. This too is a principle of cordiality that creates affection and respect and conduces to cohesiveness, non-dispute, concord and unity. So mental acts of loving kindness. For all of us, that's really the hardest, isn't it? We can physically sort of put a nice smile or say something nice, but inside we're like, oh, that person drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the difficult one. But you know, at the end of the day, when we can manage this, um, it is for our benefit. Because when we, when we 
it's us who, who, who tragically suffer at the end of the day when you're upset with somebody. It doesn't matter how wrong somebody was, it's us who suffers when we sit down to meditate and remember how annoying so and so was. So I thought we'd spend a little bit of time on this because um, for me anyway, and I'm sure everybody here, this is where we suffer the most. And uh, I'll just share with you things that have helped me and perhaps if others here can also uh, share what has been helpful to you on mental acts of loving kindness. So um, yeah, so I'll begin and say, um, this is something that, you know, is uh, especially when you live in a community of in, in, in monastic life, very strong minded people, because that's how you become a nun, you go against the stream, <laughs> you do what everybody else doesn't think is right, you do it. So you're generally quite quite uh, independent characters become monastics there's a whole group of very different people <laughs> who are all very sure they're right <laughs> living together so monastic life is a and and you've all come from different backgrounds i've always found it for many years you know you know like how can they do that <laughs> even though everybody is good so um after i now it's been like my 14th year in living in community i'm getting good at it <laughs> i'm getting good at it so one thing that i heard a sutta the other day on um, developing um how to let go of grudges it was about letting go of grudges but uh it was you wouldn't believe it okay this is a very brilliant sutta but you, but it's true. It uh, it says to remove grudges, there are four ways. Way number one, to develop a mind of loving kindness. Way number two, to develop an attitude of compassion. Way number three, to develop an attitude of Smudita, sympathetic joy. And can you guess the fourth one? Yes, develop a mind of equanimity. So um, um, it's, yeah, this is something that I found personally very useful. Because sometimes you think, oh, I've got to have nice thoughts towards this person. I can't be irritated towards this person. But perhaps try one of the other, other others, not just loving kindness, but try perhaps one of the others so for me um uh something that worked was compassion uh because quite honestly after many years of practicing you realize you're very deluded and then you look around and you go everybody else must be equally deluded unless they have gone into jhanas where the five hindrances are at bay or in general, all of us don't are acting to some degree or the other from delusion, from really not seeing clearly. And so when you when you real because most of the time you think, surely this person should know the right way to do things, which is my way, of course, but <laughs> they must know the right way to do things, or they they should know better. But uh, uh, I realized what I thought was the right way was really quite, you know, it's just my way, you know. And so the same with others. I kind of think um, uh, often of, of my parents, you know, if you think your parents know everything and they should get it right. But if I had to become a parent even not right now, what do I know about parenting? And so the same with your parents. What do they know about parenting at 25 when they had you? <laughs> they really a bunch of kids who got together and then had another kid. So, <laughs> so <laughs> when you put that to put your, your parents into perspective, then you can really genuinely have compassion because quite honestly, none of us, you cannot take other human beings seriously for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't know what they're doing quite honestly it has helped me a lot so compassion is uh for, for me like 
been really great to 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 um to accept other people like other people's like you know odd 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 inexpl inexplicable behavior and just like me we don't really we don't really see clearly we believe our thoughts and we believe we bind to our conditioning we bind. we were talking about earlier how all we do what up you know what we like grace has been eating with her hands mm -hmm. and she says it feels so wrong <laughs> she said and for me it's uh, when we're trying to, like it feels so right <laughs> so, <laughs> but we believe it it's wrong to eat with your hands you are putting your hands in for, for me and Tanda, it's like it's right to eat with your hands. How else do you eat? So we believe these conditionings and expect it to be absolutely the only way of doing things. But it is just just one just just conditioned ways. Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So there's somebody with their hand back, hand up. Um, and I think Manori at the back is going to unmute her. Casey, yes, okay, go ahead. Unmuted. Yes, go ahead. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Venerable, first of all, for um, your reflections on uh, the sutta. So uh, for me, something that always helps me to have um, develop a mind of loving kindness is to think about the conditioned nature of all beings, mm -hmm. um, because it helps me feel like this, distance of it's not being personal that 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 person that being is just reacting to the current conditions that they're experiencing um and they you know they couldn't be any other way that's that's how we all are we're all just reacting to our conditions and so for me that helps me um have more more metta right yeah thanks 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 that's very that's ex yeah we're just reacting to our conditions how our parents brought us up what our parents did um just doing what just doing what my mom did <laughs> someone else is doing her what her mom did i said yes yes and yes nikki uh, you have to um yes please unmute yourself unmute oh, okay thank you lovely thank you uh, yeah, on the back of that, actually, I was thinking about when I'm in conflict. Well, when I don't go into conflict, mm. and how to do that is because I used to, when somebody would be telling me that I'm wrong, I'd automatically think go into a defensiveness that would then make me attack somebody, I guess, verbally and in my mind, mentally. Mm. So, what I do now is I just, um, one. I can't be bothered. <laughs> I don't be bothered anymore. So that's been quite a good. Um, that's helped. Mm. I think the all helps. Right. <laughs> then the other one is nobody's right and nobody's wrong. Mm. And I just it sort of di dissipates anything that is like well I I want to I absolutely say well I'm not wrong but I might not be right mm. and then it. It just goes. Mm. It's fueled by I can't be bothered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, mm. It works for me anyway. Wow, that's age. Uh, yeah, maybe that's also true. That's <laughs> You're just too exhausted to <laughs> <laughs> take up too much energy. <laughs> That's true. We have uh, another thing is that we have such a sense of right and wrong. It is wrong to, you know, it can, whatever. It is just wrong to slam doors or it is wrong to uh, whatever, talk back. But um, that creates such a division in our own minds, this sense of right and wrong. But uh, yeah, right and wrong. What 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 is that right and wrong? I guess for what is really right is what is um, leads to peace, what leads to um, a kindness, what leads to compassion. That is that is right. Not it is not right to bang doors. <laughs> uh, so um, 
that I guess that is that is right. It is right in the context of um, leading to to wholesome states of mind. But yeah. um, okay. Thank you, Venerable. I'm um, really enjoying your reflection as well. And just following Nikki's uh, reflection, it kind of remind me. Um, I think also Ajahn Chah used to say, when we trying to make our mind or decide something, we always ask, "Are you sure?" Um, so that question, like sh sure, sometimes I heard like he just asked question sure, and then that kind of help to make kind of harsh judgment for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I often, when I ask myself, am I sure? The answer is always, no, I'm not sure. Mm. And, uh, that person mm. probably yeah. not really meant to do that. Mm. And, you know, um, am I really right? I'm not sure. Um, so that seems quite helpful as well. Mm. Wow, Thank wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, often we, th we, we think just because we thought it that it's correct. <laughs> but actually, yeah, that is nice. Hmm, maybe, maybe they just, maybe it's not necessarily correct because I thought it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes. Anybody else uh, would like to share how they uh, deal with them? um developing mental and mental acts of loving kindness yeah james yes please and you when you to yourself ah, there we go <laughs> hello um i think i think part of it is just taking care of yourself as well you know um maybe this seems obvious really but you know just making sure you're well rested and well taken care of yourself and, and like i find um i suppose it's putting the causes in place is that if i have a good meditation in the morning mm. nice and peaceful and settled and when i go out into the morning go out into the world and form it up towards you know things lovingly and, and not not uh you know having nasty thoughts basically so right, right. Uh, definitely need that in place it helps a lot it really does so. right just right. my little thought right so, thanks, good meditation thanks. yes yes starting your bed on the right start getting off on the right side of the bed but you know but starting the day off oh no you're frozen I wonder if you can still see me I can see you. We can see you very well. You froze a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Good point. Start the day off with meditation and start the day off in a, in a good yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just happened to wake up early this morning. So I thought for a change, yeah. I'd get up early and make good use of the time. So I had a sit before mm -hmm. breakfast. Wonderful. Wow. And the, the difference really is going in with a sort of more of a smile and welcoming of course it can fade your day if you're not uh yeah, 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 yeah. but um yeah. yeah thank you right oh well the great grace just a second there's someone who with their hand up Kedwin, Kedwin, and then and then yeah yeah Kedwin, please yeah go ahead Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Okay. Oh, okay, now we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wanted to add that I um, I uh, have had a conflicted relationship with my mother um, mm. for many decades. And uh, at some point, uh, about five years ago, maybe, mm. I decided that every time um, she was oh, I'm sorry, we you dropped out again. All right, yeah, someone suggested you could type it in. <laughs> it might take a while. <laughs> but we really can't hear hear you, unfortunately. 
Yeah, well, you're there, but yeah, we can't, we can't really hear you. Okay, well, you can take your time to type and then Grace, perhaps, good. Grace, who's sitting over here. Let me change the mic. Oh, sure. So that Grace can Okay. So Grace, you can see. Okay. Yes. Um, I was just reflecting on the sutta, um, saying uh, or against holding a grudge to bring up the Brahma Viharas and mm. what would I guess um, my question is kind of like what would he say about the aspect of understanding and not immediately trying to reflect on ways to like get rid of the grudge grudging mm. thoughts but mm. like that because that's kind of in my mind it's kind of covering over the right yes issues. yes yes Yes, and it's yes, like yes, to find yes, the yes. root issue. It's kind right, of the inner right. questioning, like somebody was saying about, like, are you sure? Yeah. But, but yeah, like with tenderness, asking, like, what yeah. is this right. like, so upset? You know, right. like there's some sort right. of like, yeah, root, yeah. root um, sort of almost like a child. You know, you right. just feel like, oh, child, yeah. be compassionate. Think about all these things. Like, yeah. yes, that's true. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hurt. You right. Know? So there's right. like an right. inner yes. hurt. Yes. But yet, yes. I also yes. understand that yes. it's yes. all sort of layers of delusion of the self and everything right yeah I'm, yeah I'm curious about that because there's all these methods of yeah. focusing on the you know sensations yeah. in the body and the yeah, psychology yeah, yeah. and all these layers yeah of like yeah. understanding what's right. what that issue is I right guess. right right what is the right. use of that in relation to what the Buddha says I guess about it maybe is my question does yeah. that make sense yeah. uh I will I just did it people hear Grace yes Yes, they can hear Grace, apparently. But yeah, I, I to repeat Grace's question is um, there's an underlying issue that makes you feel have feel aversion or something like that. And how does um uh you know how do you get to that underlying issue and how do you resolve that underlying issue with in psychology or or just investigation? Is that what you're trying to say? Takes years of practice. <laughs> yeah from experience unless you are quite enlightened already it just takes years of practice and just practice like meditation yeah investigation. well just just uh what whatever uh skillful means that that just works works for you um be it uh you know i mean I, i'll ultimately you realize that things are out of control you are it is this is not you know sounds coming it's you know there's nobody there who can who can there's nobody there who can change change it we are just so fixated in a me <laughs> I mean, ultimately, 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 but of course, that is the, that is, a, you know, a skillful mean what, that is ultimately the, the reality of it. But, uh, but in the meanwhile, there are, there, there's, there's um, many other psychology i'm not sure mm -hmm. that helps you just work through what happened with you as a child or but yeah 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 but from from the from the dhamma point of view it's the fundamental causes because we want to exist and live happily ever after mm -hmm. yeah and we have no control over it we have no control over ourselves. We have no control over the more we just kind of let go and just allow things. And, yeah, and I think, yeah, I think I often get in the trap of like, oh, I can heal myself. Right, like, right. I can just, you know, understand this, right, this, and this, then I'll right, be healed. But right, it's, uh, right, it's a trap. <laughs> right, right, right. We so try to fix, heal. we try to fix ourselves. We try to be a better person and I will be all right as a better person. To some degree you can, but ultimately you you, know, you have it just arises and just stuff arising and passing away. 
and it's just yeah no nobody there um okay oh there's someone else um surely raise the hand that she put, put it down, down. Shirley. Oh no, she said I'll come back with my content when my reception oh, no, is that better. Is, that is not Shirley. Um, oh, that's Kedwin, yeah. Yeah. So um Shirley has taken I, I've I've left a message for her. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we have a lot to say about that because it's a very favorite subject for everybody. Uh, but uh, can I finish this four ways of uh, removing grudges? The first was uh, metta, the second one was compassion, the third one is actually mudita. And uh, when you see the good, genuinely something really beautiful about somebody else, like in a monastery, there are many good things about other people. You just focus, oh God, that person's so annoying. But, <laughs> but uh, there are, there's many good things about everybody you, who you uh, who you live with many 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 good things so if if uh, we rejoice not in the fact that oh they're so rich or so beautiful but rejoice in their goodness their good qualities qualities that you see are you know um pure like i find that much better than oh how wonderful that they you know whatever they're really smart or whatever it is um but uh, qualities that you go, gosh, that person um, uh, doesn't speak badly, you know, that's a beautiful quality or that person doesn't, um, um, yeah, is always um, is cleans up, cleans up after other people or, you know, something that is that is a, a, a quality that is a dhamma quality, a beautiful quality, a quality that you know is in in line with the dhamma. I find that 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 helps me to rejoice in that person, or they love the dhamma. This person loves the dhamma. They're willing to practice and and sacrifice their ego. So um, mudita, and the fourth one is of course equanimity, because. At the end of the day, people just move according they according to their karma. If someone was upset at the wrong time, did the wrong thing, you see it you see them suffer afterwards. So you really don't have to, you really don't have to be upset at them because they will suffer regardless, as Ajahn Brahm is famous mm -hmm. line. <laughs> you don't have to get revenge because karma will get that e x x x x anyway <laughs> you don't have to seek revenge because karma will get the bastard anyway <laughs> So um, yeah, we don't have to spend our energy feeling upset at so and so because if they are meant to suffer, they will suffer. <laughs> we we are suffering in the meanwhile on their behalf, which is a complete waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to take? Oh uh... uh, yeah, yes, Mukun. Would you like to say something? Yeah, um, is my audio coming through fine? Yes, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's it's so interesting you speak of mudita. To me, I mean, the mm. Brahma Vihara has really made sense, mm. I guess, because of mudita. And uh, mm. my experience uh, really blew me away. But I was uh, basically a colleague, actually a junior, was getting a recognition. And uh, it just so happened, I got to see a mail that said, oh, you know, this guy is getting X, Y, Z. And we were just supposed to chat up anyway. And this person is actually a friend, you know, and it's it's not a, a friend. We worked together. And uh, I remember there was a, a Bollywood movie when, where they say that, you know, when uh, you do, uh, when you know, when you don't do well in exams, et cetera, no. uh, you feel bad. But no. when you find that your friend has done really well, 
<laughs> you've done badly it hurts a lot more <laughs> it's uh, but it, it is something like that you know i'm like this guy is getting a recognition and i'm not or you know i didn't and this guy was junior to me mm. and uh, uh you know it was initially it was like you know that's i i really didn't feel good about it and then i stopped myself and i said you know this is this is this is not nice you know this person is somebody who's in your team you supported him you actually helped him now he's done all the right things he deserves what he's got Mm. and you really should feel good for him mm. and uh thankfully when i spoke to him i actually told him look you know and i actually told him how happy i was for him mm. but the amazing thing is i mean he appreciated he said look he actually said i know coming from you it's coming from the heart and i was I actually felt a bit guilty when i heard that but, <laughs> but the amazing thing is mm. i felt so good for about two or three days after that oh mm. and i was like wow i mean uh yes i've you know heard of the word mudita it's you know in hindi it's a word mm -hmm. and you know so you it's not like i didn't know that but um you know in normal day-to-day -day life the mm -hmm. the the opposite of jealousy doesn't actually exist right i mean we don't even the i mean that's how shallow i think my life has been right to not even know the existing or existence of an emotion that's the opposite of uh, mm -hmm. a negative uh, but yeah, so I mean, like, uh, it, it, that, that was very, very significant for me. And I said, okay, like, kind of made me take a lot more interest yeah. in the Prima wow. uh, since then. Wow. I actually told him afterwards, I told him actually, you know, my in initial reaction was I actually felt bad, <laughs> but then I got stopped myself. Mm. I told him that later, of course. Mm. <laughs> wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, wonderful. And, and sometimes when you've done it once, you can do it again. You know, your mind kind of finds a new pet route and you go, oh, that's a really good route. And then you can do it a second, third, fourth time. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, thank you. Thank you. Can I say? That. Yeah, that's when we're Chanda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't be anonymous. <laughs> um, just how interesting that is that it was actually a little bit contrived almost. It was a little mm -hmm. bit like making yourself mm -hmm. do it and kind of a little bit like you wanted to feel the mood to it. It wasn't completely mm -hmm. natural, but even just mm -hmm. pointing the mind in that direction, mm -hmm. even when it's not 100% pure, mm -hmm. has such a big effect. Mm -hmm. So that's really encouraging. Right. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's Ajahn Brown says, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> and it seemed to, you know, go quickly. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right. That right, right, that? yeah. <laughs> I hope everybody heard that. They had lots of nods. Okay, cool. We have a fancy new microphone. Uh, 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 microphone. It's a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we, I guess, uh, we'll go on from a favorite subject and finish the sutta because it is, wow, 7.30. So we have two more, three, several more, but um, we will go through them quickly. Yeah. So, um, again, a monk or nun shares without reservation any righteous gains that has been righteously obtained including even the contents of his arms bowl and uses such things in common with his virtuous fellow monks or lady monks <laughs> <laughs> yeah he um, shares without reservation any righteous gains that has been righteously obtained including even the contents of his arms bowl and uses such things in common with his virtuous fellow monks this is a principle of cordiality that creates affection and respect so i'm i'm sure we are all generous people but you know everything that we have when we have an opportunity to share it it just doubles the joy i'm sure you've all experienced when you've had uh, a meal and uh, you've uh, shared it with somebody as the buddha says even if it was your last morsel of food if uh, you, oh, this could be, yeah, if the, the, the result of giving and sharing, you don't understand, you don't know what the power of that is. So, um, yeah, just the 
anything you have, share it with everybody, whoever it is, not holding it for yourself. It's such a relief. It's such a release. So, and uh, the next one is, again, a monk dwells both openly and privately, possessing in common with his fellow monks virtuous behavior that is unbroken, flawless, unblemished, unblotched, freeing, praised by the wise, ungrasped, leading to concentration. This too is a principle of cordiality that creates affection and respect and conduces to cohesiveness, non-dispute, concord and unity. So he possesses um, in common with his fellow monastics virtuous behavior that is unbroken, flawless, unblemished, unblotched, virtuous behavior. So that is wonderful when everybody in living in community, in that community together, are equally virtuous. It, uh, there is a power to it and there is a harmony to it when everyone keeps the same standard and the same, um, um, same high-mindedness. Of course, you cannot choose in a workplace who you live with, but, you know, at least to whatever extent you can, um, associating with a, a community of high-minded people carries you up as well. So associating with the wise and you also get you also get get uh, sucked in. So again, a monk dwells both openly and privately, possessing in common with his fellow monks a view that is noble and emancipating, which leads out for one who acts upon it to the complete destruction of suffering. For one who acts upon it to the complete destruction of suffering. This too is a principle of cordiality that creates affection and respect and conduces to cohesiveness non-dispute, concord, and unity. Wow. <laughs> How wonderful if we live in a community of Arans and we are one of them. <laughs> in the end, uh, but um, yeah, uh, I guess this points out how powerful it is to live with people who have the same um, view as you do, who have the same goals as you do, who have the same, um, um, you know, high, who, uh, same life perspective as you do. Because one person in the, you know, in a group in a family could be, oh, I want to live in a bigger house and have more money and go on holidays, and then the other one wants to stay at home and meditate and be quiet and do nothing. So, uh, fortunately, that happens. <laughs> yeah, but uh, to to live in a group to the greatest ability that we can, that um, have the same, um, um, uh, yeah, principles and the same values that we have is of great benefit and produces definitely harmony and concord. Question is what happens when you aren't with such people, but we shall leave that for another day because we've only got three minutes. <laughs> oh, it's an eight o'clock. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Ah, I thought it was still 7.45. Right. Ah, okay, so maybe we can stop there for a moment and see if anybody has anything to 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 say to um living with people who do not have the same view that is noble and emancipating, Venerable Chanda. So, um, yeah, I really like the way you gave an example for that in terms of the lay life. And mm. I think it also in terms of the monastic life, it points towards mm. having the right view in terms of the Dhamma, mm. and having that framework. Mm. You know, mm. As we were talking about this mm. morning about the Eightfold Path, mm. understanding that whatever teachers we might listen to, mm, whatever right, kind of right, 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 things right. we might learn or right, we might learn from, right. we have the same context for right. it. And we understand how right. it together right. in that 
in that area. Right, right, and right. And what a difference that makes when everybody has the same right, view because you're working right. towards the same right. goal. Right, wow. Um, mm. And I think in that sense, it's talking about a very specific mm. view, you know, like right view, mm. whether it's a skill mm. winner or mm. even a preliminary mm. right view, mm. you know, understanding the right. camera on this a little bit, mm. you know, there's a kind of effect of our actions mm. that can be wholesome or unwholesome. Mm. And then understanding about the four noble truths, mm. uh, so that our motivation is actually mm. freedom from suffering, mm. right? Uh, mm. together in that language. Mm. Wow. And uh, I think mm. this really points to the importance of um, being careful, really, about how our spiritual companions are, mm. because there are so many things, mm. so many paths, right. and yep. so yep. many yep. kind of self appointed teachers mm. as well mm. who mm. might have. Mm. Mm. A different view. It mm. might seem mm. slightly different. Mm. It would take you in a completely different direction. Right. Yeah. Miss the entire path. And right. That way. Right. So I think it's actually pointing mm. out the power of being in mm. actually Buddhist communities that have mm. common amount of right. Mm. I hope it, did people hear that? It's generally not. They're sort of like maybe maybe heard. But what Venerable Chanda was trying to say that um we were talking this morning about, you know, there are just so many teachers and so many talks and so many um, thing, you know, teachers online, things you can listen to. I mean, where do you begin? But um, to, if you have the framework of the Noble Eightfold Path and, and, um, Keep that framework in mind when you listen to various, various, you know, this person said and that person said, but having that framework in mind that allows you to hear other things, but remembering the importance of, of, of that framework of the, of the Noble Eightfold Path, keeping that in mind, keeping right view and <clears throat> to as, um, yeah, keeping that right view in mind allows you to hear other things but it also to the yeah, we all get carried away with this and that and and you know this person said and this is really cool and that's very interesting so um having that ability to go back to to genuine to to spiritual friends to to really uh, really good teachers so to to always have have that as your reference when you explore the wonderful world of the internet <laughs> but yeah having that uh, connection to to um yeah well good teachers the eightfold path the eightfold path mm -hmm. yeah having that connection yes yes so. okay casey yes please Hi again, everyone, and uh, thank you to uh, Venerable Tanda for your comment just now and to Venerable Upeka for, for opening this, this discussion question. Um, uh, off of Venerable Tanda's uh, comment about uh, spiritual friendship, um, and so in relation to this, even within different uh, communities of practitioners, I found um, it matters a great deal about this like even subtle subtle differences in mm. in view or goals um can make a big difference mm. so i um i normally live in in laos which is a buddhist mm. country um mm. and so that was where i i started my my whole practice um and where i did my first time i started spending time with um with monastics and with other practitioners mm. um and just now, now I'm visiting uh, my my home country in in the United States, and had my first opportunity to go to a monastery here, mm -hmm. and uh, which was Empty Cloud Monastery mm -hmm. in in New Jersey. Right. Um, and so that was my my first stay mm -hmm. at a at a Western monastery, and I some found a very interesting difference mm -hmm. in the spiritual friendship between these two contexts. Mm -hmm. So in Laos, um, the 
you know, there's there's a much larger community at, at mm. the temples. Everybody is is always going to make merit. Um, mm. But what I found, uh, even when I stayed at a monastery there for for a full month, um, with many of the of the nuns, with the eight precept nuns who mm. were staying there as well, um, mm. I found that there was almost like a, a just a small mismatch in um in the goal or priority that I felt that many of the mm. people who were there both lay people and um, monastics mm. um of course were still aiming to uh, achieve nirvana but um mm. were perhaps more focused on on the next life on achieving mm. merit in order to gain a favorable rebirth mm. um and so for me I ended up feeling kind of alone in my practice that a lot of people were more focused on oh uh, mm. the nuns were more thinking about what can we do to help the the, the monks to help the monastics like mm. how can we spend more time cooking or spend more time in service of the monastics mm. whereas for me it was more important to do the the practice the the meditation or the mm. um, mindfulness practice love and kindness whatever mm. um different kinds of practice I wanted to do and so even though I, I spent a full month there, I felt like it was um, the progress that I made was kind of more hard won and it felt a little lonelier. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when I ca came to the US and I went to Empty Crowd Monastery, I found both the, the monastics and the lay people were all very, mm -hmm. very much on a similar path, very much yeah. had a similar goal to me and were focused yeah, on the practice yeah. and on, yeah. on um, yeah more the the world transcending comma instead of the, the positive rebirth comma and it made a huge difference in in my practice even though i only stayed a week i felt like i was able to to learn a lot from, from my spiritual companions um and it was really valuable and beforehand i hadn't even considered about how how important it is um not only to have spiritual companions around you but to have spiritual companions who share in that right view mm -hmm. um and, and then just this morning i was reading the uh Medjima nikaya 16 i think mm -hmm. which is where the the buddha talks about um talks about the um the basically making the decision whether to stay in a place or to to leave mm -hmm. um and saying that if you're not making progress, then that is a situation that you should leave a certain jungle mm -hmm. thicket or village or town or city or um, company of whoever, whomever you're following. Um, and so it made me recall this and think about how we need to be aware of um, our environment. And if the environment is not serving us to try and find a way to um, seek a better environment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great, great. I'm glad you found that resource just in your own home country. That's how handy is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and at different times of our lives, perhaps we need different things as well. You know, different communities um, um, serve our, 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 you know, our needs at, at different times. I'm not to say there is one ultimate ultimate place and that's the only only place that will ever work but uh yeah 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 um yes mukund yes yes go ahead mukund i think you can on yeah, yeah. yes okay i can now uh sorry i'll be brief but yeah this just um so the thing I found most challenging is when it's close relationships that are not conducive or that are, you know, mm -hmm. in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is a tendency to kind of want to try to explain or understand or whatever. And sometimes people are just coming at it in a fundamentally different way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having the wisdom to know when to mm -hmm. disengage when to mm. give up and move on. Mm. Uh, I can be like for me personally, it was very, very uh, uh, freeing, right? Because otherwise you're just stuck in. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I, I guess my point is I agree. I, you know, sometimes you just need to move on. It feels like it's easier if it's a community in general mm. and much more challenging when it's yeah. you know, within family and yeah. within 
yes 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 i think we all struggle with that yeah 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 it's true so oh someone said erica is saying he's also going to visit m she's also going to visit empty cloud ah now sorry a couple of things uh awesome sharing casey empty cloud as in the chinese chan master no it's a place it it's uh maybe that the origin of the name empty uh cloud for this monastery but the one i went to was a theravada monastery in the us you can google it you can find it so yeah they're they're, they're very very present on the internet there yeah very present on the internet okay so we'll go to the last one which is um oh no that was the last one that was the last one. Oh, sean has something to say yes sean okay you can continue yeah sean yeah hello sorry <laughs> thank you yes. um i'm just going to ask um i found this all really helpful actually um it's, it's amazing how it covers so much and mm. also hearing other people's um comments is is really useful sharing and actually when it talked about sharing um in here uh, i actually thought the fact that people are sharing their experiences as mm. well that can help all of us mm. but a, a question i had was i've noticed this week particularly i've had some feelings of you, you know not pleasant feelings Mm. And a, few, a lot of them, I was, I was thinking, this is ridiculous. I don't know why I feel like this. Mm. Nothing particularly bad has happened, and etc. But I really, I found it quite hard to let it go. Mm. I, I was kind of struggling with what to do. I mean, I was mu obviously much more aware of it. Potentially, mm. I would have been asked. And there was a moment where I managed. I was at work, but sort of have a five-minute sort of meditation at my desk. Mm. So that helped a little bit. But mm. do you know, any um maybe suggestions for that kind of thing when when you notice clinging mm. on to things that you think you know on a logical way i'm thinking mm. this is ridiculous why it's like i was taking things maybe personally or mm. upset by really silly things so I, I i felt a bit stuck so i just wonder if you've got any mm. welcome to being a human being <laughs> <laughs> and I liked your comment about what, what was um I wrote it down, right? We can't can't take human beings seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. laugh as well. So I think things like that are helpful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it happens. You get stuck sometimes. We don't know, we can't see the 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 forest from trees from the forest. It just yeah can't fix it all up in one week <laughs> yeah okay. yeah i think you have to accept that sometimes we are lost and sometimes we just don't know sometimes wanting it to be otherwise is the problem mm. 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 okay thank you <laughs> Okay, right. So, um, Casey's fine. Casey's thanks, Casey. That's the amazing Chinese Chan Chan Master Shu Yun, I think, but I might be getting the name wrong. Translates to empty cloud. He passed away in the late 1950s at the age of 120. Because there was another name for um, um, uh, empty cloud. So we have come to the end of the sutta and um, last few minutes. So we'll just finish, I'll just finish reading the last few lines. And uh, these monks are the six principles of cordiality that create affection and respect and conduce to cohesiveness, to non-dispute, to concord and to unity. So just to remind ourselves what those were again, um, the first one was bodily acts of loving kindness. The second one was verbal acts of loving kindness. The third was mental acts of loving kindness. And the fourth was sharing any righteous gains with everybody. Um, 
the fifth was uh, possessing virtue that is the same as everybody else. The sorry, the fifth was and the sixth was um, to have a view, preferably emancipating view, that is in common with everybody else. So um, Shirley had something to say. Shirley, please go ahead. Just a little comment, really, yes. that touched me when yes. he said it creates affection. And I would imagine mm. this is the word PA, is it? Yeah, PA, PA, yeah. Which yeah. in a lot of the suttas is yes. sort of treated in a sort of, well, no, that's not good because it right. needs an attachment. Right. And what he seems to be saying here yeah. is that affection in this context which is no. which is without attachment is something skillful and mm. that just touches my heart because when mm. the buddha says oh well you know from a from affection mm. you know we get fear and dread and all mm. these awful things right, right. it feels a bit cold right 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 so yeah, yeah. you know i just thought Oh, that's nice. Right. Such right. beautiful things, affection, respect, right. and cohesiveness, non-dispute, and concord. Right. They're just so right. beautiful. Right. Thank things you. Things that can do it. But uh, yeah, I feel great affection towards my spiritual friends. And mm -hmm. it's nice to know that the Buddha recommended mm -hmm. that. That's all I wanted to share. Yeah. And thank you so thank much you. for leading such a beautiful evening. And thank you, everybody, who shared their thoughts. Thank you. Yes. And I loved the little sort of meditation at the beginning right. to, to, to bring us into, right. Right. to prepare ourselves to listening to the Dharma. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Venerable Chanda, and you. for your comments as well. Right. Thank right. you, Shirley. So um, that is the end of today's session. And there's Manori here, who is sitting right next to me. <laughs> oh she's 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 going to come in yeah she's going to come into the screen <laughs> just to prove that we are all in the one room <laughs> and uh conclude today's talk with a dharma talk yeah so today's super session is offered volunt in a voluntary basis um and any donation is gratefully received and will be used in the upkeep of vihara in the Oxford and for Venerable Chanda and other visiting bhikkhunis upkeeps as well. And if you want to be involved in offering a dana, uh, you can either visit the Vihara or you can do a supermarket delivery um, if you live far away. Uh, and then you can help in many other um, a one off work in maintaining Vihara as well. So if you are willing, if you want to know how to get involved, you can email team at anukampa.org. Sorry, yes. team at anukampaproject.org. Yep. And then uh, you can, you can uh, talk to our team and they will give you more information. And also um, in the web and in the Facebook, we update the events. Um, there's Ajahn Ramali's events in May. Uh, there's some talks and um, uh, there's posters in the Facebook and the web board. So if you have any um, like-minded friends, you can send them as well. Um, I think the retreat is full, but there's, there's space in the talks. And there are other events um, stated there as well. Thanks. This and on, and on this Sunday there is a uh, there is a Zoom um, online retreat conducted by Venerable Chanda. And Saturday this tomorrow morning nine o'clock UK time uh, there is uh, the Metta as usual nine okay. to ten. Um, and uh, please note that from Sunday the UK summertime changes so there is one hour difference <laughs> for next week's uh, so don't get late or uh, <laughs> check, check the times thank you <laughs> okay okay 
And here's Venerable Chanda also turning up in the same room. <laughs> We can all get on a video, actually, because we've got a wide video. We've now got a wide video, so we can all fit. We don't have to sit like on each other's knee anymore. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's nice to see you. I kind of missed you from over there, but it's nice to see you anyway. I could hear your voices, but it's not the same as seeing places. <laughs> oh, lovely. Does everyone else want to come and say wave goodbye? We've got a full house here. Come, <laughs> if you wish. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, we still got a whole minute, so we can gather the funds and wave <laughs> goodbye. And uh, I think there's still space if you want to join the online retreat on Sunday. And tomorrow morning, I think Ben Bulipeka is doing the meta, aren't you? To save my, to save my energy. And tomorrow afternoon, for anyone who's in Oxford, is Stefano as well. Um, myself and Venerable Pekka will be at the Oxford Buddha Vihara for the last session. We've been invited by the lovely monks there to. Um, lead the last session of a day retreat it's kind of like a discussion really so if you want to chat with us in person i know some of you on the other side of the world but um <laughs> those who are closer by you can come along all right that's it thank you to everyone you're welcome okay good night everybody bye everyone